Hi everyone, welcome to Wool and Spinning. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. This is episode 131, which is just unbelievable. I can't believe that we are closer to 150 than we are to 100. That's, it just is mind boggling to me. I wanna welcome you to this place. Welcome to Wool and Spinning. On this podcast, we talk a lot about, my alarm's going for some reason on my watch. Um, on this podcast, we talk a lot about hand spinning and making hand spun yarn and then using our hand spun. So if you look up on Instagram or, um, well, mostly on Instagram, hashtag wool and spinning and hashtag use your hand spun, you'll see a lot of stuff from the community and from myself um, around using our hand spun and working with our hand spun. So welcome everybody. We have a full show today, which we always do. I'm, I don't, ever expect anything else these days. Um, The chat is absolutely full, so thank you so much everyone for being here. Um, I see Sarah and Charlotte and Becca, Diane. Oh, Becca, you were able to make it. I know it's like right at bedtime for you. So we're recording at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, December 18th. And for many who are in the UK, of course it's eight o'clock. No, it's seven o'clock at night right now. So I know sometimes it's a little bit dicey to get here. I'm going to cough. (coughs) I woke up this morning really, really poorly recovered. Um, I had a sore throat and um, I just wasn't feeling 100% really tossing and turning all night. And I just got off over the flu, which of course is why last week's show, why we have two shows back to back because I was sick the week before. But you know how when you're fighting something and you've just gotten like over a really bad... um, you know, cold or, or sickness or whatever, and then you get something else on top of it because your sort of immune system is a bit run down, you're run down. I think that's sort of what's happening. So I'm having a very quiet day after, before and after streaming. Nora's uh, kindergarten chapel is this afternoon, so I'm going to be heading to the school to watch that. She's so excited. It's not even funny. She was up this morning, she's got her party dress on, and she's taking her heels and her backpack because she wants to wear her little dancing shoes. It's absolutely hilarious. So I hope you guys are getting ready for, um, you know, the holiday season, whatever it is that you celebrate and whatever uh, traditions you have in your part of the world. Um, I'm actually feeling pretty good about everything in terms of like stuff that we have to get done. We had to order a couple of things this morning, my husband and I, for the kids because an aunt and uncle in Ontario wanted to give the kids something, but they couldn't get it ordered and delivered in the right amount of time. So Mike took care of it. And that was the last thing that we sort of had to take care of. So um, we got pajamas for the kids for Christmas Eve. And then, and it's just going to be the four of us on Christmas Eve this year. And then Christmas Day um, will be the four of us in the morning. We have a tradition of making these potato cinnamon bun things that was a recipe that I got from Katrina a few years ago. And it's sort of become like the tradition now. So this will be the third year that we've done them. And then we're hosting Christmas dinner with my mom and my brother and his family. So, um, yeah, so it'd be good. It'd be a good, um, and then we go to the pantomime on uh, Boxing Day, which has also become a bit of a tradition. So that's our tradition and what we do in our family. Um, I know everybody does lots of different stuff and everybody has lots of different beliefs and lots of things that they are involved in. So whatever you're doing and whatever this season brings for you, I hope that you're surrounded by friends and family and a lot of love and warmth. And um, in our community, I know a lot of people will be wishing one another, um, you know, happy holidays and whatnot. So um, yeah, I hope you guys have a good, a good couple of weeks. And then we'll be ringing in the new year and it'll be 2020. Like, how is that even a thing? It's just crazy. Nora keeps talking about when she's going to turn six and she's like just over the moon about turning six next year. And I'm like, don't wish the time away. Like, I wish I was six years old. <laughs> but not really. But you know what I mean. All right. Um, so it's so good to see everybody. I know you guys are um, saying hello to everybody. We've got people from Sweden in the chat today. The UK, Arizona, um, Oregon. 
Uh, I know we've got people from Colorado because I know who's in there. <coughs> Scotland. It's just so good to see you guys. We hit a huge milestone this past week on Patreon. So we've been this close for a very long time to hitting 300 patrons for our community. I switched over to using community numbers as our gauge for unlocking different milestones and different community goals because I found that the financial incentive for me wasn't it just wasn't meaningful. Whereas if we have a really super engaged community and the whole goal of this whole thing is to build community and to be surrounded by like-minded people and share and share the things that we love and share the things that we are working on and inspiring one another, but also doing life and, you know, challenging one another and helping one another to, you know, live intentionally. I felt like the community numbers were a way better gauge of sort of what we were building and what we were um um, so working towards because it doesn't matter if you're pledging a dollar a month so that you can be a part of the live streams or if you want to spend more because you want to be more involved in the spin alongs and the content that I create every month. It doesn't matter. Um, the, the, the purpose is to be engaged as a community and to have, um, you know, like I said, to, to be surrounded by people who want to share a love of making yarn together. So, we just hit 300 this past week, so starting in the new year. So our 300 milestone was to unlock a weekly live stream. So they will be on Wednesdays. They will be, I'm not sure if they're going to be at 11 a.m. or at 12 noon. I'm not totally sure how that's going to work out just yet, um, but they will be weekly starting in the new year, and there will be more information coming out about that within the next couple of weeks. I just wanted to get through the Christmas season before we start a weekly stream because otherwise I'd actually be live streaming on Christmas Day next week if we started a weekly right away, and I'm not sure that that's fair to my family. <laughs> so... Anyways, I wanted to say thank you so much. It's you guys that are making the community what it is, and you deserve huge props and big pats on the back. So in today's show, we actually, I changed things around. I don't know if some of you have noticed. The show notes and everything that went live last night is actually different from what has gone live now. I just updated everything and changed things around because I finished my Christmas wreath that I was working on. I told you I would show it to you in this show, and then I didn't think that I was going to be able to get it done just from not feeling great. And I have some a, a brand new spin that I wanted to share with you that I'm spinning on a, my distaff. We had this whole conversation a couple of weeks ago about distaff spinning, and I said that I would share my journey about that. So I, I have some some footage of that. And then we have a spinning growth. So um, and I was able to click a couple of photos of the bath sheets that I'm making as a birthday present for my niece. And so I will pop those in at the end. So I hope um, that you guys enjoy the show. I'm just looking at chat actually. Yeah, the, I. it's a huge milestone and you guys um, have been instrumental in that. So um, being able to go to a weekly live stream is unbelievable. It seems that the Wednesday midday Pacific Standard Time seems to work for the most people. We've tried lots of different times and we've tried lots of different uh, days of the week. We've tried different hours. We've tried weekends. We've tried weekdays. It sort of seems like this is the most well attended time and we can totally come back and look at that further on. If it's just really not working for a group of you and you guys contact me and say, hey, like, can we think about maybe trying X, Y, Z time and give me some specifics. Um, I am more than willing to do, you know, one week we stream at this time and the next week we stream at this time and then the next week we stream as long as it's consistent so that um, throughout the days, weeks, months, everybody knows exactly um, when the stream is going to be because the whole idea is that you know that at 11 a.m. on every Wednesday we'll be sitting here chatting. So that's what I would really like to do is create that consistency and then the show will be released publicly at the same time every Friday evening. So that's sort of what we're working towards. All right, let's uh, run the credits and then I'll make a couple of uh, announcements housekeeping wise, just very short, and then we'll get into the show.
So everybody, so a bunch of people in the uh, chat just chimed in and said consistency is the best. So I totally agree. It's way easier to plan my life when there's that consistency. So I'm glad to hear that that's the initial knee-jerk reaction is having that same time every week. We're going to run into some problems when we have daylight savings in the spring. So we will navigate that um, when we get there. I really wish they would just drop daylight savings, but they aren't yet. They dropped it in Saskatchewan, which is where all the farming is. So, you know, I wish they would drop it. If California drops it, then hopefully the rest of the West Coast will drop it. But um, it's kind of up to California to set that because that's where the big, the biggest population on the West Coast is. And that apparently, according to the media, when they cover these issues, every time we have our slide forward and our slide back, that's usually the reason that they cite. So for... Uh, I wanted to bring, so anybody who's in the attentive spinner tier on Patreon, please uh, perk up your ears. There was a post that went out earlier this week um, for a doodle to be part, a scheduling doodle for you to sign up to be a part of Woolen Spinning Radio. We're going to be... Um, so we're going to be making some changes to that tier on Patreon and doing some word prompt episodes where you guys are invited to sit down with me on Skype only via audio. You do not need like a, a webcam or anything. It's not any video. It's just audio. So you, all you need is, is like a microphone that you plug into your cell phone. This is all you need is headphones with a speaker on it. That's all you need. Um, and hop on Skype, make an account. You can add, and all the information to add me is there. And all we do is sit for, you know, 35, 45 minutes and chat about a specific word. So anybody who's in the attentive spinner tier, if you guys could have a look at that post, I have linked it in the show notes at patreon.com slash wellforpearls and at wellforpearls.com. The show notes come out on Friday when the show is published publicly on the blog, but on Patreon for patrons, they are published now. So you guys have access to that now. Um, yeah, the EU has been discussing it for a while. Um, that's a good point, Britta, because I think really the whole world needs to drop it. That, that, you know, like it just messes up. It's funny, when I worked in Emerge, we always had extra staff on the day, the two and three days post the change, whether it was in the spring or the fall, even when you fall back and you gain that extra hour of sleep, those two or three days after, there was such a huge increase in accidents that they would put on extra staff for the Sunday, Monday, and the Tuesday because it would emerge would just like get so busy. So anybody who's a critical care nurse or an emerge nurse in particular probably can attest to how much busier emerge gets because people make silly mistakes and they there's lots of car accidents and it's like they say that those forty eight hours post is like walking around with a couple of drinks in you that your it's like your blood alcohol is up even though that's not what's happened. It's really damaging. Where did I put? Hmm. The office is a mess because I've been cleaning it up. Every time I clean things up, I can't find anything. Have you noticed that, um, that theme? Um, oh shoot. The sock study ebook special, um, special offer is still going on um in on patreon so if you would like to download your free ebook that's very strange um it is being offered to just about every patreon level so if you're a patron um and you would like sorry i need to get my hair cut um if you guys would like to or um participate in that special offer go to patreon it's on until the end of the month the special offer for the ebook um you just go to blurb and um you have to put in your information and then you get a download link and it, it there is a bit of a delay in getting that download link i've noticed that it takes because I've um, downloaded it a couple times just to make sure that it's working and it takes um, a, sometimes up to an hour to get that link. So don't worry, you will get it. Um, and I have a soft cover print of the book and I have posted on Patreon. It's a public post. It's for everybody. You do not need to be a patron of the show. Um, for you, if you would like to order a hard copy of the book, so it's not hard cover, it's soft cover, but if you would like a physical copy of the book and that works better for you in terms of um, interacting with um, content, you can go ahead and order your own copy. They are made to order. So I didn't do like a big run and I'm not selling them myself. It's through the Blurb website. 
and you pay blurb directly and then you can they'll print a copy and they'll send it out to you so there is a tiny delay but if you have the ebook and you would like the a soft cover copy of it you can go to blurb and order that and the links are in the uh, post and I will link them down below if I didn't link them already so the ebook is being offered to most patron tiers as a special offer for the month. And then if you would like to have a soft cover, that's for everybody. If you'd like to order that yourself, you can absolutely go ahead and do that. And it's just driving me batty. It was right here. Like, honestly, the book was right here. So in the December episode thread, if you would like a copy of, I have, I have a, a soft cover to give away. I'll mail that out um, in, in January. If you can go into the December episode thread and tell us about um, what were we talking about? We were talking about socks. That was the prompt. Does anybody remember in the um, in the um, chat if you guys I remember the prompt from last show? It was about socks. I just feel really discombobulated that I can't, that the book isn't right here. I have two of them because I'm going to keep one and then I'm going to give away one. And they're like, they're, they were right here. I found it. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, I don't feel super organized this morning, and it's only because I um, woke up not feeling 100%. So I have signed this copy, and so whomever wins this one, I will mail it out to you in January. We'll announce that on the next show, the first show in 2020, and I will award this to somebody. But if you would like your own copy of the book, you can order that on Blurb. I didn't do a big run because I just, because of the ebook, I, and I think most people sort of interact with their content digitally now. Like it just seems like most of us are sort of minimizing our, um, you know, footprint. Like the, these books are sort of all I have now. I've gotten rid of most of my other books because I just find it's just too much stuff. But if you really like having some of this stuff as a physical content, um, you know, please go ahead and... Um, take advantage of that. I did update the edition that's on blurb so that at the end of each, um, at the end of each essay, the, because in the ebook it's linked, like you just click on the link and it takes you to the external link that was the vlog on YouTube. Because of in this, you can't do that. I added them. So this doesn't have that, but whoever wins this, I'll send you the links. Um, in the new book, when you if you order a soft cover copy, the links are in there and you just have to type them out into a browser. All right. Yeah, spinning for socks was the prompt. That's right. That's right. Um, what you enjoy what, what you enjoy about spinning for socks? I think what happened was I changed it because originally we were gonna give away a bat, and so I had a different question, and then um, it got changed because we were gonna focus on socks. All right. Okay. Oh, thank you, David. He's already gone three quarters of the way through it and he likes it. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. Let's, um, I think that's it for housekeeping. It's not too much, just the ebook and the soft cover book. I just want to make sure everybody knows exactly how to get that content because it was a gift from me to you, the ebook, and um, it was such a pleasure to make it for you guys. So for breeding color studies in the newsletter this month that came out on the 14th, so the Woolen Spinning newsletter always comes out on 14th of every month. If you would like to sign up for it, it is in on the blog, wellforpearls.com. Just sign up and you will get the newsletter. I only send it out once a month because there usually is only a few things that I really need to tell you about. So this month I actually um, shared some of my thoughts about the beginnings of breed and color studies for the new year and what the vlogs might look like and uh, my process and whatnot. And it's actually um, an, uh, like a video. So if you, um, if you missed that, the link is in the show notes for that video on the upcoming breed and color studies that I'm gonna do. <clears throat> some people have already 
finished spinning their fiber. We've already talked about it on the show a little bit. We're working on organic pole worth. If you did not purchase fiber and you don't have to to participate and you would like to participate, just grab some pull worth, some organic pull worth, whatever you have from your stash and just jump into the episode, the, um, um, breeding color studies thread chatter thread on on Ravelry um, and just jump in you're welcome this study is going to go a little bit longer than we normally would so normally our studies would end at the end of March and then we would start our next one in April but Katrina and I need to move the dates around a little bit because both the the beginnings of all of our breeding color studies they always hit the two major festivals that happen here in Vancouver Knit City in October and then Fibers West in March. And it's just, at first Katrina was like, it was per it's perfect because I can just do all the work all at once and then it's done and I can sort of rest. But what's ended up happening is it's, it's just too stressful. So we're gonna move things around a little bit and I will keep you posted in the new year about the new dates. And we're just gonna basically shift Breed and Color Studies forward by a couple of months, that's all. <clears throat> So do make sure you check out the show notes for that video that I made on the How I Spin content and what, what um, I'll be working on for January 2020. The How I Spin vlogs will come out monthly and um, those are part of the co-executive producer tier and above. So any tier from the co-executive and up, you guys have access to that content. And the vlogs are going to be a little bit longer going forward. So starting in January, they're going to be sort of up to this point, they've sort of been anywhere between... 15 and 20 minutes and now they're going to be sort of more like between 20 and 30 minutes so you can expect that um, slight change in content all right let's do do you guys I I think in the title I had the Christmas wreath next but in my show notes I have spinning growth next so let's do spinning growth and kind of stay in order and as always the time stamps will come up at the beginning of the um show notes so that you guys can just skip ahead to where you want to go and what you want to watch so for spinning growth we have mjm which was a post in the spinning growth thread um it was post number 148 and mary i think i'm pretty sure it's mary joe but i don't want to miss say um mary I'm, I'm positive it's mary joe but in case it's not i'm, I'm very sorry She's been a longtime member of the community and a longtime member of the Ravelry group. Spinning growth is an opportunity to come together and look at yarns that we've spun and projects that we've made that maybe just didn't turn out quite the way we expected or wanted or they completely blew up in our face and they were absolutely terrible. It's not an opportunity for us to just pile on and criticize. It's an opportunity to learn and to look to one another for inspiration. So I loved this one that, that she submitted because of what she says. And this actually isn't her yarn. She's knitting with somebody else's yarn. So I'm going to read what she wrote and then I'll share with you why I thought this was such a great spinning growth. I just finished this sweater. This sweater. It is a test knit for, public, for the Public Works Pullover by Sarah Jordan, which this sweater pattern has now been released because this was a little while ago. This project is a little different for me because I didn't spin this yarn. I bid on the hand spun yarn at an estate auction of a woman who is downsizing. She had almost 50 wheels in the auction and lots of yarn. I bid on this lot of yarn because I wanted some tools that were included in the bin. I ended up with 30, 30 skeins of this gray two ply and each skein is over 200 yards. There is also some lace weight in a dark blue and some white that had already been knit into a sweater for my daughter. I wonder how long it took her to spin all of this and if she had a project in mind. I do know that she was a weaver also because there were several looms in the auction. Was this going to be woven into a warm blanket? Why was it abandoned? I don't think I will ever know, but it feels good to use the yarn. I compared this yarn to my own hand spun as I knit. I tend to add too much twist and ply. This is lighter, something that I have been working towards. It is pretty consistent overall, but it's not perfect. I spun the contrasting color on a wheel I bought at the same auction, trying to be looser as I drafted and not ply as tightly, and I think it matches pretty well. I would agree, I think it looks awesome. I know I have lots to learn about spinning, but comparing someone else's yarn to my own has helped me see that some of the inconsistencies I worry about aren't that bad overall and I just need to get over it and use what I make. 
So you guys probably know why I wanted to share this with you. I am always waxing poetic about how our yarns don't need to be perfect and some of the inconsistencies in our yarns are what make them so amazing. And often when you knit up a garment, you can't tell, um, which is pretty amazing. And if you look at commercially spun yarn, a lot of it isn't absolutely perfect either, especially some of the yarns that are made that are sort of smaller mill spun batches. And I think it's a really great reminder that, you know, these yarns that we make, we're not inspecting every single little tiny stitch that really overall, often our yarns are pretty incredible and are more than useful and can make really amazing projects. So when we're first learning how to spin, I think it can really feel overwhelming that our stuff isn't perfect. And I think it's a good reminder to just use our yarns. Oh, congratulations, Britta. She cut her first steak today. That's amazing. Congratulations. Okay, you guys are chatting about... Oh, you guys are talking about import fees for when you, um, for the fiber. Okay. Hi, Bridget. It's good to see you. Okay. I just don't want to um, get too behind on chat because sometimes... Um, we're chatting away on the podcast and I sort of lose track of where we are. Yeah, sweater looks wonderful. Texture is lovely. It's a really, it's a really beautiful sweater. Well done. Okay, let's talk about some of my works in progress and then we'll go into the Gotland that I've been working on. I will just switch my cameras around. I wanted to mention this really quickly. This is Hello Bargello and Bargello is a type of um, it's a, it's a, it's a block in quilting. The glare from the lights is messing with it. Anyways, these are the Rhiannon earrings. Um, I ordered this on a complete and total whim because my friend Felicia of Sweet Georgia was working on a pair of earrings out of this. And there's all these different colorways that you can order in. Basically you do these needlepoint earrings and um, you can make, I think it's four pairs per kit. Because I sort of thought, well, if I order the kit, like it's not that I don't know how to make this stuff, but I thought, well, if I order the kit, then I'll know exactly how to make them. And then I can uh, buy more of the plastic uh, canvas. And then you get the earring back. So I think you can make, I think it's three pairs that you can make in total. I think it's three pairs. It might be four. Anyhow, and then you get all the different cruel, cruel wool colors. And the company was started by Brett Barra. That's her photo there. And she does um, needle craft and is trying to sort of reinvigorate making for um, modern, sort of with a modern aesthetic, if you will. So the, these are the different colors that you can order. So you can get this kit, this kit, or this kit. So this is the one that I ordered. So I'm actually going to do a pair. I might even do them this afternoon since I'm not feeling 100%. Um, I'm going to do a pair for my sister-in-law for her birthday in February and put them aside for her. And um, I'll make a pair for, for myself, just totally and completely for fun. So, um, and I, like I said, I ordered this on a complete and total whim. I usually don't do stuff like that, but um, I was just really taken with it. And Felicia was working away at it and she was having so much fun because it's just like the simplicity of it. And then I figured, well, once I sort of had had the kit, then I could um, make them make them myself. So anyways, just really fun. Yes, I have actually considered spinning my own needlepoint and cruel wool. Um, there's a couple of people I've seen on Instagram and that I follow on Instagram who do their own wool and for a needlepoint. 
And actually, because I grew, needlepoint was one of the first things that I ever did um, when it came to textiles and making other than sewing, because my mom has always had a sewing machine. And um, I, I've actually often thought about doing that because I have some of Kay Facet's patterns, um, some of his books, my, they're at my mom's house actually, of some of his embroidery patterns. And I've often thought that I should sort of think about that. And I probably have enough leftovers um, and bits and pieces that I probably already have a whole bunch of yarns that I could use for some of the needlepoint. All right. Okay, so this is Hyssop um, by Layla, Ra uh, Layla Raven. And I've made really good progress. So since I talked to you guys last week, I've just been plugging away. And I don't know if I actually complained about it on the podcast or not, but I know I thought it. Um, you see how there's these stitches here that are wrapped, right? And it makes the points on the diamonds. And I was finding that those rows, because I think that, that row comes up every, is it every 10 rows or every 12 rows? It's cons it's enough that like I really felt myself slow down on those rows, like significantly. Because you knit the stitches, bring the yarn to the front, slip those stitches back, wrap the yarn around, slip the stitches back, wrap the yarn around, and then slip the stitches back. So you're basically working those same five stitches three times and you're wrapping the yarn around the whole time. So what I did, I feel it just totally brilliant for thinking of this. Anything to knit a little teeny tiny bit faster when it comes to that kind of stuff. I don't love really super fiddly knitting. Oh shoot, where did it go? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just, well, you guys know, I really like very, um, I was going to say plain, but I don't mean it that way. I like very simple aesthetics. I like clean lines and I like things that look more elaborate than they actually are. Um, so what I did, I finally found it. It got buried in the bottom of my knitting bag. So this is just a, I don't even know what this is. Knit picks maybe? No, this is Knitter's Dream. It's just an interchangeable four millimeter needle because I'm knitting these on four, this pattern on four millimeter needles. So the reason why I use the interchangeable and not the, a double point is, and I use the same, the same gauge. So the same size needle. And the reason for the interchangeable is because of the hole at the end. So when I get to those five stitches, I knit with this needle instead of this needle. So I knit the five stitches. Maybe I can actually show you. Oh, I don't know if I can. Am I on that row? Oh, I'm on one of those rows. Oh, yay, I can actually show you. Okay, so this is what I do. So just give me a sec, bear with me. Cause I feel like I've like really sped myself up as a result. So I, um, okay, so the next five stitches I have to wrap. So instead of using my, um, that needle, I've been using my interchangeable. So I knit my next five stitches So just bear with me here. This is just so much faster. So I knit my five stitches. It looks really fiddly, but it's just because I'm at the beginning of the row. So just bear with me. And then, you know when you're doing color work and you spread the stitches out um, to so that your floats along the back have enough space? Um, I spread them out and I wrap it around. And then once I've wrapped it around the, the two times that I'm supposed to, I pop the needle into the back of the interchangeable and slide them across. Oh, so much faster. 
and then I can carry on with my next seven stitches. And then I get to the next five that I need to wrap. I know the yarn is really dark, so I'm sorry that the yarn isn't super, super easy to see. But I then knit my next five. You guys have no idea how much faster this has made this row. Because this row is so slow. Um, so I wrap it around twice. And then pop the needle into the back and slide it across. And then I can keep going way faster but the DPN didn't work because I had to match up the tip with the tip I was trying to like match up the tip and the stitches would pop off so the reason why this works is because it literally fits over top isn't that cool S silly things small things that make all the difference so anyhow, I thought I would share that with you guys because if anybody decides that they want to knit this pattern out of their hand spun because it's such a gorgeous pattern for hands, hand spun, um, I wanted to share that with you because it is a very time consuming row, but it makes the pattern. And now the question is if I can find the book that the pattern is out of. So I usually download, oh, just bang the table. I usually download most of my patterns on Ravelry, but I did buy this book. So this is brand new. It's called To the Point, The Knitted Triangle. It's by Layla Raven. And it's put out by Quince and Company. And the and the shawl that I chose to make first out of here, because I pretty much want to make everything in here, is this one here called Hyssop. And you started at the bottom. So you start knitting at the bottom and you make your way up and then you add the garter stitch border at the end which goes around all three sides um, and the, in the pattern it calls for an Aran weight yarn and um, I'm knitting with a sort of light DK heavy sport so very different gauge different size needles I think in the pattern in this book it calls for five and a half millimeter needles yeah and I'm knitting on four and a half millimeter needles. So in US size nine and I'm knitting on US size six. Um, this is the yarn that I reclaimed from my shoreline vest and it's knitting up really beautifully. And I talked about it quite a bit last, I think it was last show that I talked about it quite a bit. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna have this finished for Christmas. I was kind of hoping that I would so that I could wear it on, on Boxing Day, but if not, no big deal. Um, I still have to do all that garter stitch and I never find garter stitch particularly fast. Although I can do it forever because it doesn't hurt my wrist. So I'll just keep working away. I'm gonna knit until I run out of yarn. So even if the knit border sort of ends up being a little bit thicker than in the pattern, I'm just gonna try to use up all of the yarn because I don't really have any other use for it. And this is a 50-50 uh, Merino alpaca blend. There was a fiber review that I did for Kramer Yarns on the blog a few years ago. So I have to admit, I'm really enjoying it. Um, now let's talk about distaff spinning. So I, I just pulled the whole head off of my Lundrum because I was using the jumbo flyer. And um, I was like, well, Rather than just taking the bobbin off, I may as well just take the whole thing and keep it all together. So this is um, Sweet Georgie Yarns Gotland. It's part of this group of fibers that they dyed called Falling Leaves that were part of, there's, there's this one in Gotland. They did them for <coughs> the UK event back in the fall called Spin Together. And I didn't participate because it was just a little bit too much to take it on. But Sweet Georgia um, dyed a whole bunch of fiber to show how different fibers take color differently. So that was the Gotland. This one is the 50% uh, alpaca, 30% merino, 20% silk. And then there was this one that was the Superwash Targi. 
So they all take the color very, very differently. And um, it, I'm sort of working through these three braids and spinning each of them. And then they're, I'll be doing a project with them. And Felicia and I are hoping that this will become some content for the School of Sweet Georgia, which would be really fun. So what I did with the Gotland, sorry for all the crinkling in the mic. Um, I took the Gotland and I stripped it down and I pre-drafted it. And then I loaded it on a distaff. And I wrapped it around the distaff in like figure eights. Oh, Mary, I'm glad you have a Lendrum that you love it. It's a great wheel. They're just great wheels. They're very easy to use. They're well made. They're sturdy. I'm just gonna go back because um, you guys have been chit-chatting and I just don't wanna miss anything. So while you're watching, <laughs> I'm just gonna catch up. You guys are talking about a bunch of stuff in the UK and with Brexit and stuff. So um, sometimes I put a small needle on the non-working end. Oh, okay, oh, that's a great idea, Diane. And you guys are talking about Lendrums. Oh, Eve, you're hoping to get a Lendrum. That would be amazing. Um, do you know the ratios for the high-speed head on the Lendrum? Yes. So I have the fast flyer. I don't have the super fast flyer. I would love to get it, but um, I'm trying to make do with what I have. So the fast flyer comes with the Lendrum. There's the regular flyer, the jumbo flyer, and the fast flyer. And I pretty much only use the fast flyer and it's a ratios 12, 15, and 17. And it's more than enough for most of what I work on. If I need anything faster, I use my Magicraft Susie because I have a 27 to one. So if I need really fast, I use that. So with the distaff, um, what I found was that the, the, the hardest part and the most interesting part was figuring out how to hold my hands. There was two things that I ref sort of reflect found myself reflecting on immediately first of all my hands were much further apart than they normally are which for a long wool works really super well because I felt like the pre-drafted fibers as they came forward it preserved a lot of the air in there so the yarn feels a little bit airier than some of my other worsted spun long wools because I tend to default to short backward anyways, it felt very natural to kind of lean back and work with the distaff and to have that in my hand. And the other thing was because I wasn't physically really holding the fiber because I was holding the distaff, um, I felt like it was actually really quite easy to maintain my consistency and to maintain my sort of spinning technique, if you will. I wasn't holding the fiber and my hand, it looks like my hand is clenching it, but it's actually really lightly holding it. It's actually barely holding it at all. Um, and that seems seemed to really help with, with how consistently I was spinning. I've only spun through about half of the distaff. So I loaded it with about... 50, no, uh, 25 grams of fiber. And I think I still have probably about eight, seven to eight grams left um, that I need to finish up. Yeah. Yeah, so this the ones that are like on the wheels that are mounted, um, that are on the wheel, like on the wheel and loaded, or you're holding it under your arm because you're spindle spinning and you're keeping it still, um, that's sort of the most like that's sort of how we see them used the most of the time. The way I'm holding it here is how I've watched my friend Kim McKenna, who um, blogs over at Clada Fiber Arts, um, how I've seen her spinning on hers at Guild. And so because I was just experimenting and I was just playing around, I sort of thought that was sort of a, a good place to start. I have no idea um, going forward, like as I try more things, what how my technique will change or like trying other things and trying different ways of doing it. I don't, 
I don't know what that'll look like, but um, I will obviously keep you guys posted. Um, I don't have any photos of loading the distaff because I wasn't sure if I was doing it right and I wanted to try spinning with it before I took a bunch of video and spent a bunch of time editing because I wasn't sure if this was going to work very well and I originally had it a uh, ribbon wrapped around it and I know that my friend Kim uses like scrunchies but I find because to keep the fiber in place and to keep it from falling off but because Gotland is quite toothy I didn't find that to hold it in place that I really had to secure it like it just stayed where it where it was where I put it on the distaff so I ended up taking that off and just spinning off of it but I will as I get more comfortable I will definitely show you guys how I load it and what that looks like and what's sort of been working for me. I think these, like many spinning tools and like many things that we do and try, I think a lot of it comes down to personal preference and what works for you. So I'm just in the beginning stages of sort of playing with all of this, but I will keep you posted and I will definitely share on the podcast what that all looks like. I'm hoping that Eric, um, Katrina's husband, starts making these because I know that he was playing around with making distaffs. Um, and if he is going to start making them and um, if they're going to list them in the shop, I'll, I'll put them in the show notes because I do, I do really, I was surprised at how much I enjoyed it. I also found because I could load it up, I could sit there and spin for a longer length of time. And I often don't have really super long periods of time to sit and spin. But knowing that the fiber was loaded and that it was ready to go, when I put it down, I could sort of break the fiber, put the distaff aside, and know that the fiber was ready to go when, next time I wanted to sit down and spin. And that was really nice. So... You guys are talking about wheels. Yeah, Magicraft is expensive. Um, I actually um, got mine secondhand because I just didn't want to pay for it new. And so I put a uh, in search of listing on Ravelry and it took a little while, but I did eventually have somebody reach out and say that they were going to sell theirs. So you guys will remember this yarn from last time. Um, this was the crepe yarn that I had made. And it's super gold and sparkly and it's completely unapologetically synthetic. Um, the gold thread is like this awful nylon. It, you can't break it with your hand. It's just terrible. And I was going to put it around that wreath that I showed you guys. So these are the photos here of what how it all worked out. So I tried wrapping the yarn around and I was playing with it for quite a long time. And it just, no matter what I did, it just wasn't really working. And I didn't like the aesthetic. And I had already put the lights around. So I ended up just on a whim because the, the gold thread in this yarn is not, it's not very forgiving. And I had spun the two ply yarn and then I had craped it with this gold thread. And so I decided to take a little bit of it because I had hand wound this into a ball. I've since reskained it to show it to you on the podcast. But I had hand wound it into a ball. And so I took some of it and I started playing around with sort of what it would look like if I made a little pom-pom. And there's no give to it. Like the, the yarn has no stretch, no memory. Like it's, yeah. So I started playing around with making some pom-poms. So I made one really big, huge one. I made two medium ones and then I made a little baby one. And I tied them onto the wreath with some pine cones and some clusters of bells. And now it's on our front door. Our front door is that blue color. And uh, I think it turned out really super well. It was just for fun. It was completely just to do something different. I've never had a wreath. Um, every time I see them in the stores, I just can't be, I just can't justify the cost. Because I always think, oh, I could make something like that. So this was just completely and totally for fun. We've gone very minimalist this year in terms of our decorating because we're trying to clean out the house to get ready to do our reno in the new year. And so because of that, I just wanted to, you know, do something that was totally and completely fun. So, yeah, yeah, it's yellow. <laughs> it's a yellow Rachel wreath. That's so true, uh, Megan. I wanted a color. Actually, the reason why I chose the gold, 
um, sort of this goldy yellow is because I knew because our door is that teal I wanted um, a split complement so I wanted um, a color that would really accentuate the door and accentuate the wreath and make it both both of them seem brighter so that's actually why I chose the gold we also have and actually maybe I'll post it in the slack channel if I can get a really good photo tonight we've had rain non-stop for the last couple of weeks and it's been really gray and really dark and it's not been we haven't had really great weather we don't tend to at this time of year anyways, but it does get kind of depressing. Anyways, we had our house done this year in gold Christmas lights. And in the past, it, our lights have been kind of higgledy-piggledy and whatever we had. And Mike would kind of just string together whatever. And so this year, he's like, let's do one color, whatever that color is. Let's do one color and it'll just look really homogenous and just really lovely. So we did gold on both our house is a two-story, um, and we did gold on on both uh, both floors, and it looks really nice. So with the gold lights, it, I think it's called like warm white. So with the warm white lights and then the wreath, it just it looks nice. So yeah, the only reason why I was intentional is because I don't like red and green. I know um, it's not my favorite color combination uh, and so I sort of like okay what other colors could we do so like our Christmas tree is the warm white uh, lights and um, yeah it, I really love that warm white against blue or um, the sort of icicle type colors or the gold that's really been popular at Christmas the last few years because um, I'm not a big big fan of red and red and green it's just me I think because my mom doesn't like it, so I grew up hearing that she, it, she, it wasn't her favorite, and yet her decorations are all red and green, so go figure. Oh, that's a great idea. So Becca said she swaps out the trimmings on her wreath so she can hang it from October to January. That's a great idea. So autumn colors, red gold, white silver, that's such a cool idea. Neat. Mm, yeah, Mary says not my favorite either. Yeah, the red and green is hard. It's, you know, it's the very primary. Well, you can see my poinsettia in the background. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. But um, yeah, when it's in the natural world, I feel like it works because it's never like that true primary Christmas red. Like that's more of like a cranberry. And then it's like this beautiful forest green and it works. But to each their own. Okay. So I talked to you about my Christmas wreath. So the last thing that I wanted to share, because we're coming up an hour, are my bath sheets that I've been weaving. So these, I talked about these on the wool stream, but I thought I would share some photos of these because I was actually really hoping they would be woven off today, but they're not. Um, I probably have about three quarters of a towel to go because what you can't see in that first photo is that the back apron rod at the very top right there is right on the other side of the back of the back beam so I've almost woven these off it's about three hours of weaving in total when all is said and done I'm really surprised at how fast these went um, they're 2-8 cotton and I just took a whole bunch of my pinks and purple 2-8 cotton and I did uh, striping but randomly threaded stripes so I held three warp threads together and I wound 18 ends per inch, so eight, 18 threads per inch. So each um, each stripe is about an inch wide, and I held those three threads together so that when I went to thread them, I they would just come up randomly. So even though those three colors are only in that one inch um, section, and then three different threads for the pink section versus the purple and gray, um, they were threaded randomly, so there's no like rhyme or reason to how they're threaded, but it's the same three colors per inch. Does that make sense? So what I did for the warp then was I only used the three pink colors that are in that pink stripe. So there was like a corally pink, which is on the shuttle right now sort of a mauvey pink and then a salmon pink. So one towel is the salmon pink, one is the mauvey pink, and then there's the last one is the coral pink. 
And then what I'm going to do is take the full length of the fabric and I'll fold it into threes and I'll cut three bath sheets out of it. And one of them is going to be for my niece for her birthday. So um, Nora's going to get two and then I'm going to do another warp, um, same number of ends, uh, but different colors. And there will be two bath sheets for James and then I'll put one aside for my nephew and he'll get that for his birthday in the summer. So I'm just slowly working my way through. Uh, I had talked about this quite extensively on the wool stream, but basically what Mike and I are really hoping to do is sort of minimize some of our possessions and some of the stuff that we have um, by having sort of less stuff and stuff that doesn't take up as much room. And so I had gotten the idea for bath sheets at Circle Craft here in Vancouver, which is an artisan festival that happens over the Remembrance Day long weekend. It's a five day marketplace. And there was a lady there that had these beautiful linen bath sheets and they're just gorgeous. And it gave me the idea. And so the kids have been using, I had woven off two already and the kids have been using them in their bathroom and they've been really liking them and really enjoying using them. So I'll weave off two more for each of them. And then the ones that they've been using um, the last couple of, probably the last month, They've been through the washing a few times. They're going to go into the trailer because those are the trailer colors. And I will um, replace them with these ones for the kids in their bathroom. Yeah, I'm really happy with how they're turning out. So they're 18 ends per inch, 18 picks per inch. Um, I'm using a 12 dent reed. So I threaded it at 18. I think it's like 212121 when you're slaying the reed there, um, which is the reed is that big thing in the front that's part of the beater. And then I slayed just tabby weave. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And I've just been weaving plain weave. I was gonna do two, two, twill, but um, in the end I thought to really show off the stripes, I would just stick with plain weave. I found online a four shaft pattern for candy cane Christmas towels. Um, Christmas tea towels and because Christmas is only a week away I'm like trying to like hold myself back from making them but I also kind of want to like make them and throw them on the loom so if I can get this done I might work on that tomorrow because I've got a quiet day again tomorrow I've got some stuff I want to do for the podcast and I'm just really trying not to get sick so I might warp that up and just do a really short three yard warp like one that I can weave off relatively quickly because it would just be fun, to be honest. So. Mm. Six two cotton, and you love them. That's awesome. Good to know, Bridget. I'll look into that, because I've been trying to figure out, like, if I make a couple of sets for Mike and I, because I'm going to make them quite a bit bigger, the ones for Mike and I, like adult ones, and I think I'm going to do four. So, and then a couple more of these, like, smaller ones that are for the kids, so that I have one for my hair, um, so I'm kind of trying to figure out what I want to use for those, but if you had really good, um, uh, results with the six too, that might be a good option. Yeah. The candy cane towels, the pattern I found it, um, on a image search on, um, Google. Like I think I put in, I printed, I got Mike to print it off and actually it's in the other room. Otherwise I would run and grab it. Um, I think I put in, let me see if I can find it. Sorry for the typing. Uh, yeah, here it is. Okay, hang on. I'll put it in the chat. I think I can put it in the chat. Oh, maybe I can't. I'll post it to, um, uh, I will post it to the Slack channel. Um, It's there. Okay, I just put it in the Slack channel. It's just a very, very simple four shaft pattern. Because <coughs> um, the ones that I really like are eight shaft. Um, and I don't have an eight shaft loom yet. My compact that's behind me has the capacity to go up to, so this, my jack loom is a four shaft, my big floor loom. But this one back here, my compact, it has the capacity to go up to four shafts. 
sorry, up to eight chefs, but it only has four on it currently. So I think that's something in the new year that I will work towards is uh, putting a, making it into a four, into a four shaft loom, sorry, an eight shaft loom, because there's some patterns. There's not a lot of them, but there are a few weaving patterns that I would really like to be able to make. And I don't need a 45 inch wide loom to make them because they're like tea towels. So I only need like 22 or 24 inches of weaving width, which is what my compact is, but I would like to be able to make them. So I think I'm gonna look into um, upgrading that and getting the other four shafts for the new year. In the new year. I can only do so many things, right? So my husband sets our hand towels on fire. How does he do that? Do you guys have a natural gas stove or something? Okay. Oh, that's awesome, Eve. So she borrowed a table loom from her guild. That's wonderful. And e Megan's finishing her hand spun vest. Oh, you guys are awesome. Oh, and for, yeah, so Charlotte, 4-8 cotton. Um, I was wondering about that for towels because I have a whole bunch to use up and I was actually thinking about that for, for some, um, for, for some bath sheets. And I was also thinking about 4-8 cotton and just doing a really small warp on my Ashford um, sample it because I have a 12 dent reed and I was thinking about just doing like plain weave and doing up a whole bunch of dish cloths um, with my 4-8 cotton. So lots to think about for the new year. Oh, a pot holder. Oh. Okay, it is noon. I have kept you guys for long enough. We have a couple of weeks um, off from the podcast and from the stream. The wool stream will stream next Tuesday on Christmas Eve. Um, we will have that. Um, I, I thought it was just better to keep going with the schedule. Um, mostly because, to be honest with you, um, it, it keeps me organized. Um, and then we'll be back on January 1st. So in two weeks. Um, January 1st will be New Year's Day with uh, our first live stream of the new year, which is just unbelievable to me. So a couple weeks, and um, I am going to be quite quiet on the Slack channel and Patreon and whatnot over the next week. So from Monday the 23rd through till Friday the 27th, I'll be quite quiet. Um, we've got quite a few family things going on, and um, I've got a couple of shifts in there at work. My last shifts for 2019, it's crazy. And um, I need a much needed break as well, and you guys do as well. So um, it's your opportunity to catch up on content that you've missed, um, watch the podcast, get up to date with, with stuff, download stuff that you haven't had a chance to interact with, and it um, gives me um, a week of rest. Normally in December, traditionally, we've only done one podcast so that I could have a couple of weeks of rest and recuperation and getting ready doing all the planning for the new year, but that just didn't sort of fit this year and, and this month. So we sort of kept on going with our regular programming. So we'll take next week to have a little bit of quiet, um, enjoy the holiday, and then we'll be back fresh on January 1st with the live stream. So I'm hoping that because that day is a day off for many, many people that will, uh, that lots of people will be able to be here. So I will chat with you guys then. And until next time, happy spinning. Have a wonderful holiday season. Please stay safe, stay warm. And um, I hope you guys uh, get lots of making done over the holidays. So take care, everyone. Bye.